this tutorial, we're going to run a little function that we're going to code, and this function is recursive. So the definition of recursive function, or at least from a programming standpoint, it's a function that basically calls itself. So there's the same function name inside that function. And it needs two components. One is a base case. It's like a stop. Where do you stop when you hit the base case? And two, it's a recursive call, or that's, the, that's basically when it's calling itself. So in effect, a recursive function is like a loop. It's just another type of loop, as far as we're concerned. So if we were asked to write the following code, write a function called print odd. And this function, basically, so since it's a function, it takes a bracket. This function, what it does, it's going to take an integer, an unsigned integer. Unsigned meaning it's positive. So it's always a positive number. So let's call this integer n. So this function will take an integer and it will basically display, it's going to print, it's going to display the contents of uh, the values from n all the way down to 1. Okay, so let me explain. First of all, let me make this void because this function doesn't really want to return anything. So if this is the prototype, then it should be a semicolon. So when I look at this, first step, to, in order to have a complete function, you need three things. You need a function prototype. Here's a prototype. You need the function documentation and the function definition. The documentation is made up of three pieces. It, the first piece is what is this function for? Description. So let's go ahead and write it. So print dot is a function that basically go into uh, display the odd numbers from 1 to n. What does it take as input? So in this stage, you can describe what is the input parameter? What does it mean? What are the values? What is the range? What assumptions are you making? Well, in this case, I'm assuming it has to be a positive number. Uh, what if it's 0? Well, I don't know how you want to print from 1 to 0, but I wouldn't want that. So in, I can explain here. So the purpose of the documentation is that, ask yourself this question. What does the user need to be able to use this function without ever having to take a look at the code? So notice I haven't coded it yet, but I'm trying to explain what this function needs to do and how it's going to function. Enough information, provide enough information for whoever wants to use this function in their code so that they would know how to use it. This is the same idea when you use the function from the standard library, like when you use printf or scanf or any other function. You've never saw the code, the actual code for these functions, but you've read enough documentation to know how to use it. Well, I hope you read the documentation. If not, you should read the documentation because you did not write this function, so don't make any false assumptions. So my assumption here, the input is going to be a positive integer n. Now, where does it come from? I don't really care whether they get it from the keyboard, whether they do a scanf. The user, whoever calls this function, has to pass it on to me. So when I enter this function, I already have a value for n. Okay, it's a positive integer n. What is the output? Or the return? So it's a void, so it's not going to return anything per se. However, it's going to display something. So it will actually display 1 space 2 space dot dot dot. Oh, wait, my mistake. Odd numbers. 1, 3 space five space dot 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 n. Okay, so I got a question here. What if n is like six? So print on should print one, three, five, and stop. What if it's seven? I should print one, three, five, seven. So you gotta do this thinking exercise. You have to make sure that you do some test cases. So I'm gonna develop some test cases. 
So I'm assuming the test cases are within the valid range. So what if n is 1? Because that's a positive integer. Then the output should be 1. What if it is 5? Then the output should be 1, 3, 5. What if the output is an even number? Let's say 6. Then the output should be 1, 3, 5. Should not print 6 and should not go to 7. So we get the idea, it's always starting at 1 up to whatever that number is. So I can create more test cases, but basically these are my equivalence classes, these are my boundaries. Basically this is a special case, uh, with no, 0 is not a valid case, so I'm not going to bother with it. I can always write error checks for this, but that's not necessary. And then I, well, I make sure I got an odd number and an even number. Okay, so now that we understand what this function is supposed to do, my question would be now, how do I code this recursively? Okay, we can always write it with a regular loop, a for loop, and go increment by, by two instead of by one. That's easy to do it using a, a non-recursive version. But if I want to do it recursively, well, first of all, I can do my setup. So this is the function definition, print odd, unsigned, integer, n. See, it's a copy-paste of that one without the semicolon. Instead, you put the curly braces, and now we have to do two things. There's a base case, and there's a recursive call. See, all this, and I haven't really thought exactly how I'm going to code this, but that's the setup. So even if you had no clue how to do this question, you should leave with this. This is right out of the question. You, this is the function name that you are given, the parameter as you translate it from the function, uh, from the question, the return, the documentation is reiterating the question, trying to understand the question, and then this is the setup, and this is what you're supposed to have to have a recursive function. So now the question would be, how do I do this recursively? Okay, well, let's brainstorm a little bit. Whenever I like to work with this, I like to see enough values to see a pattern. First step, I want to see the base case. Now, if I had to guess at this, the base case is the trivial case, the simplest case, the simplest number, valid number, that you can have that can give you an answer right away, no further calculation required. Well, I think I'm looking at it. If it's 1, it should be 1. So basically, if I say print odd 1, I should get 1. If I say print odd 2, so that's the value of n, it should be, the output should be one space, nothing, one. If I see print odd three, I should see one, three. Print odd four, I should see one, three, no four. Print odd five, I should see one, three, five. Okay, <clears throat> I can keep going, but I need to go enough to see a pattern. And that helps, okay? So looking at this, what is the pattern? So this regarding the even numbers. Let's look at the odd numbers. So let's look at this case, this case, and this case. Let me try to switch colors and look at this. Do you see this is the same as this? Yep. All right, so print odd 5 is really the same as print odd 3 followed by a 5. So I can replace this with print odd 3. So let me rewrite this up on the side. Let me make some room. I didn't want to erase my test cases, but I am in need of that space. I'll go back to my test cases in a second. All right. So when I look at this, print odd of 5 is really the same as print odd of 3 followed by 5. So can I do it this way? Print odd of n would be print odd what would that be? So if n is 5, that would be n minus 2, wouldn't it? 
followed by what's 5? Well, that's n. It's followed by 5. OK. This seems to be a good general case. And this works just fine if n is odd. So if I were to try it for 7 or 11 or 17, so let's say like for 7, if this is 7, it's going to print odd of 5, so 1, 3, 5, followed by 7. Yep, that would work. So that's a good general case. And remember, that's a good base case. So I've got myself a base case and a general case. Now I'm missing the other test cases. So what happened in the case where I have an even number for n? Because that is legal. I mean, I look back at, at my documentation, you know, I'm kicking myself in the head and I say, geez, I wish I told the user a positive odd integer n, then I wouldn't have to deal with this. I would be done. But I didn't say odd here. So n could be 4, could be 8, could be any odd or even number. Okay, so I have to deal with that situation. So let's take a look now at these situations here. <clears throat> So if n is even, I know, like when it's 4, I'm never going to reach 4. It's always 1 less. Well, you know what? What if I can just say, if n mod 2 equal equals 0, in other words, if it's even, then simply go this. Make n is equal to n minus 1. And just then use that, and I'm done. Because you see? If it's 4, just make it 3 and solve it. Yeah, I can do it for 3. I can't do it for 4. But if you make 4 3, then you're good. So if you make the 2 1, you're good. Hey, that sounds like a good logic. Let's take it. Let's take that plan. So if I have to prepare the input before I do the processing, so be it. That's what I'm supposed to do. So what I'm going to do here for my base case is I'm going to prepare my input. OK. Well. Keep it simple for the base case. So basically, if n is equal to 1, I'm done. Print 1. Print f. Um, I don't have to say percent dn. Just say 1. Just print 1. And you can always put 1 followed by a space. You know, it's not going to show. It's just kind of nice for output. If I want to put 1 space, 2 space, it's not a big deal. So semicolon. So if the base case basically says, that's my base case here. It's the simplest case. When n is 1, print 1. Done. If n is 1, print 1. Done. OK. Else. OK, else what? Let me put that curly brace just to be sure because I may have more than one thing to do. And it's a good practice to always put your curly braces. Even though you have one statement, it's a good practice to do this. And always line up your braces and watch out your spacing so that you can always see the code clearly. OK, so let's take a look at the else. So in other words, I don't have the base case. OK, so I have some value n. And n could be odd or even. So can I take care of the even case? All right. So if n mod mod 2 equal equal to 0, so if n divided by 2 and the remainder is 0, that means it's an um, even number. So what do you want to do in this case? Well, just n is equal to n minus 1. So n equal n minus 1 semicolon. OK? So that will make sure n is odd going to the next line. So the next line is this. It's my general case. So I took care of the, uh, the uh, even numbers. Done. So at this point, I only have odd numbers. So if I have any number odd number n, all I have to do is call the print odd for that n minus 2, and then print n. OK, I can do this. So I can basically call print, what is it called? Print odd and n minus 2, OK? So like 3 minus 2 is 1. 5 minus 2 is 3. So print that. And that is going to go and print 1, 2, 3, whatever. Or sorry, 1, 3, 5. And then when I'm done, I need to print that last part. I need to print n. 
So n, let's see. Oh, I need like a little bit of space here. You can squeeze it in. You can move this down a bit. You get the idea. So I want to do a printf percent double quote percent d comma n. Okay, that's it. Let's test this. So input called print out of one. So when n is one, is n is equal to one? Yes, print one, done. Okay, that's checked. So when it's two, call it again, print two. So if n is equal to one, no it's not. Is it uh, n mod two is equal to zero? Yes, then n is equal to n minus one, so it's gonna be one. Call the print out of n minus two. So what's it going to do here? It's gonna call two minus two. Uh-oh, see, well, this is gonna be one, but one minus two, that's gonna be a problem. Oopsie, you see the problem? All right, so it's very important to test this code because now you'd see that there's a serious issue here when I'm testing it for two. So let's recap. n is two. Is n equal to one? No, you go to the else. Is n mod two is equal to zero? Yes, it is. It's an, odd, it's an even number. Okay, so two is equal to two minus one. So n minus one, two minus one is gonna be one. Then it's gonna print, uh, we have to be careful here. We're gonna print one, n is one minus two. Well, that's an invalid input now because one minus two is, look at my documentation. It has to be a positive integer. That's gonna violate a lot of rules. That's not gonna work. That's gonna cause me some problems. So maybe I should have taken this check and really put it at the very beginning. Maybe I should have listened to my own documentation when I said it's a positive integer n, and really I knew that I always work for odd numbers because these are odd values, and maybe I should have really took care of that problem at the very beginning. So let's put this line up here. So if n mod 2 equal equal to 0, then I'm going to say n is equal to n minus 1. Let's do this here. So basically this line is gone. And it's up here now. Okay, let's now do the trace. When it's 1, okay, that's going to fail. Is n equal to 1? Print 1. When it's 2, then it's going to become 1. Is it equal to 1? Yes, print the 1. Good. When it's 3, yeah, it's just going to go do its thing. 3 minus 2, it's going to 1. It's going to print the base case followed by the 3. Good. When it's 4, it's going to run here. N is 4. N mod 2, it is 0. Yes. So that's going to become 3. Is it equal to 1? No. It's going to print the 3 minus the 2, the 1. It's going to hit the base case. And then it's going to print these. Okay. So what I want to do, that's going to work. It worked for the base case, an even number and an odd number, I would like to do now is an actual trace. So let's say I have in main print odd and let's say I have the number 4. So let's trace this code. Okay. So when we call this function we're going to put it on the call stack. So print odd is going to sit on the call stack and print odd is a function that has a value, value local variable n and the value of that variable is going to be 4. So when I enter this function is n mod 2 equal to 0? Yes, so n is equal to n minus 1. So that's going to become 3. Is n is equal to 1? No, that's not the base case. So we're going to go to the else and we're going to call the function print odd. And here 
print out as a function that has a variable called n and the value of this variable is going to be n minus 2. So 3 minus 2 is 1 there. So now when we now run this function we start all over. So print odd of 1. Is 1 mod 2 equal to 0? Nope. Is n equal to 1? Yes. Print 1. So the output is going to be 1. Yeah, a little space. Okay, and that's, that's going to return. It's a void, so it's, there's no return. It's just going to get out. So it's going to come back to this call, exactly to this line here, where we basically called that recursive call. So then it's going to print percent dn, n is 3, so we're going to print 3. So there you go. Then that's going to return. So the print out of 4 is 1, 3. Hey, it works. You want to try it for a bigger number? You're just going to have bigger call stacks. Okay, so that's quite simple. That wasn't so bad. See, I call it, I put it on the stack, and I go down until I hit the base case, then I go back. So the base case is always my stop condition in a loop. So my question now would be, you know, this is interesting. What does it take me to do if I wanted to display this? So if I want to change this question around, I mean, this is good. I like the solution. Can I change this question around? And instead of going 1 to n, I can go n to 1, like really reverse the numbers in keeping up with all the odds and everything. So basically, uh, print, let's pick a bigger number. So print 5, instead of being 1, 3, 5, it could have been, let's pick a different color. Uh, the reverse. So it could have been 5, 3, 1. How would I do that? Print, uh, print out of 3, instead of 1, 3, it could have been 3, 1. Well, of course, the 1's not going to change. So what do you think I can do to do this? So the neat things about recursion is that call stack you have to watch very closely for. So as I built the call stack, until I hit the base case, I was doing something. And then I went back. So look at here. When, I, when it was like 3, I went in. I didn't print right away. I called this function print out. I actually build the stack. And when I go again, I build the stack. And I go again, I build the stack. And then when I hit the base case, only when I hit the base case, I start printing. And when I return, after I return, I print. What would it happen if I take this line and switch it with this line? So in other words, print and then call build the stack. So I can do things as I build the stack. I can do things as I pop the stack. Now what I did here in the first version, I built the stack. And then when I start popping, I printed the one, the two, the, or sorry, the one, the three, the five, going back. So it gave me the one, the three, the five in that order. Now, if I do this piece here, print, and then build the stack. So I'm doing I'm the printing as I build the stack. So basically, I'm saying um, I want to print the three, put the next one on the stack, print the one, then go back. So. That would give me the 3 to 1 in that order. Same thing had I done it for 5. So this is an interesting thing to do. It's very nice to reverse things simply by switching the order of these. You can do things as you build the call stack, and you can do things as you pop the call stack. You get the completely reverse of what you are looking for, which is fun to do. So that concludes the code for this recursive function. Remember, the three components of a function is the prototype derived from the question, Make sure you pay attention to the input parameters and to the return type. Look at the description, input, output. As put all your assumptions in there. Think it through. This is very important documentation. You know you have enough documentation when you see people don't look at my code. They just look at this documentation and given the prototype, they should be able to use it. So that's how much documentation you need to put in there. So when you're writing a recursive function, you always know there's a base case and a recursive call. You may have to do some preparation before you enter this. You may have more than one base case. You may have more than one recursive call. Depends on the question. In this case, in order for me to work this out, I basically worked out enough examples to see a pattern. And when I saw a pattern, I was able to replace it and rewrite it in terms of itself. 
And when I do that, I can derive the general case in terms of n. And when I have the base case and the general case, I got myself the code, the base case and the general case, which I've derived precisely from my workout. So I hope this helped you in thinking through designing recursive functions. And interestingly, looking at the call stacks, what you can do as you build the stack and what you can do as you pop the stack. This uh, should be helpful to you. And try out different ones. How about print even numbers? You know, there you go. There's another question you can try for yourself. You can always code this. Notice I didn't pay too much attention to main because I designed a function so I can use it in any piece of code. All right? So I hope you find this helpful. Thank you for watching this tutorial.